Thank you so much, Adriana. It's, sometimes it's uh, eye-opening. I mean, for us, uh, I'm thinking of myself and my colleagues. We live and work in Italy, Western Europe, and we sometimes don't consider that the challenges are global. And these kind of events where we can meet and share with people coming from all over the world can really make it very clear that the challenges are global and there are a lot of things to be taken care of. And one of the things that have been set up to remember of these global challenges and global community is a special day that is, by the way, it's today, and it's the Global the Clinical Engineering Day, October 21st. Uh, the day was selected because of this event started in 2015, exactly in this day, in Hanzhou, China. And uh, when we were deciding uh, what date do we choose for the Congress in Italy, it was almost obvious that, yeah, let's do it that 21st of October. And uh, the person I would like to give credit for this and I would like to welcome so much and thank so much for all what he's doing uh, and the relevant person that he is and the nice person that he is, is Dr. Yadin David. I leave the stage to Yadin and thank you so much. They want me to be in the cage. And the reality turned out to be something that is really, really impactful. But it will not be if we are not part of committing ourselves to do more and go further together. So in my presentation, I would like to take you through becoming a profession has an obligation, has an, a commitment. And I want to talk about being a professional. What does it mean? I want to talk about the clinical engineering progress that we reached today, ask the question, where are we going from here? And then maybe suggesting some call for action. So let's go with that and think about we are becoming a profession. It's not that easy. It means that we have obligation. The obligation are consisting of seeing clearly a vision. What is our duty? Why are we practicing clinical engineering? What is the duty and the vision that we are carrying with us? And if we understand the, the, the mission, if we have a direction, then we know what the qualification we should have and how we can make this commitment to become a profession that focus on the research, development, and application of technology in order to deliver safe, more efficient, more effective, more appropriate healthcare services to everybody around the world. The definitions are not uh, hard to find. You go to any dictionary and you see that profession is a special calling requiring knowledge and long and intense training. Why everybody on this planet can decide tomorrow to be a clinical engineer and will be hired as such. Why? It should not be that way. That is not correct. 
because we cannot demonstrate sufficiently what are the specialization of knowledge, experience, and traits that we bring into the table. So we must be committing ourselves to stewardship. Stewardship is the set of principle that governs the way we behave, that we believe that we do have the expertise, that we do have the knowledge, and we do have those unique characteristics of ethics, of leadership, of team collaboration working that can bring to the table and make healthcare so much more in intensive and forward-looking than rather be the conventional backwards that sometime we were in the past. The accountability of being steward is large. I hope that the, the public will be one day saying to the hospital, unless you have a clinical engineering on the staff, we don't want any device touching us. Think about this vision. It's not happening because we are not aware or we are not known as the stewards of technology. And once we will be, our career and our contributions will be much more impactful and critical. So being a professional means that you have this expertise and knowledge, that you are making commitment to be engaged, that you have the autonomy to make decisions, that you are of ethical behavior, and that the public can trust you because you understand the responsibility that you bring it to the table. The typical characteristics of a professional are listed in front of you. I don't have to go through all of them, but maybe I want to point to the last two. You need to volunteer, you need to help, not because it's your job, but because you feel the obligation to give back to the community. And you need to pursue credentialing, showing that you do have the professional competency by validation through third parties' uh, bodies. The trust of the system where professional clinical engineers exist should be clear. It is not clear today. The public, the hospital administrators, our colleagues in the healthcare delivery team are not aware if there is clinical engineer on staff that make everything so much more safe, as Hippocrates says, do no harm. Why the physicians are known for making this commitment uh, and we, the clinical engineers, are not part of that. We should be, and we should be the stewards of technology. Two months ago, the World Health Organization published a report, and today Adriana shows a segment of it, that unfortunately, 134 million adverse events are still taking place in low- and medium-income countries, contributing to tremendously large volume of 2.6 million death annually. Medical errors are happening. We should not allow that to happen. It's a negative impact on patient outcome, and we are connecting clinical engineering with patient outcome that has positive connotation. This is not positive. We need to be involved. We need to be engaged. We need to mitigate that from the design, the commissioning, the application, and the use, so we have much better system. And what is happening with this evolution of technology is a very interesting phenomena. If you see in this picture, the surgeon is sitting in the back in the workstation while the patient is under the control or the impact of technology, of a system, placing the clinical engineers closer to the patient and distancing the physician further away from the surgical, from the sterile field as it used to be. It's important transition that we need to realize and it's carried tremendous amount of responsibility and accountability. We have made progress. We were complaining. We don't have our Congress. We need Clinical Engineering Congress. Guess what? We're in the ceremony of opening the third International Clinical Engineering and Health Technology Management Congress. Hooray for you. Big thanks to AIIC, the Italian Clinical Engineering Association. Tremendous challenge they took upon themselves. St um, Stefano and uh, Lorenzo led the team 
on the local side, Tom Judd led it on the international side, and they overcome the challenges. We also create, uh, celebrated yesterday the Global Clinical Engineering Summit where we put the compass and we said, what are the common elements among the world that bothering clinical engineers and what can we do about it? We have a list, we will publish that soon. Today, as Stefano said, is a happy birthday day. Global Clinical Engineering that started in Hangzhou in 2015 on October 21st and it's important day. We need to be engaged, and there is a website for Global Clinical Engineering Day that if you go there, you will see input from, Tom, how many countries? 70 countries have individual content from their locality on what are they doing to show the value of clinical engineering in, in so many different languages. We also are proud to have Global Clinical Engineering Journal. Yay! We have our journal, here is the website, and we have a very dynamic and content-full website for CED. We have a recognition. Anybody here submitted a name for an award under the Clinical Engineering Division website? You should do it. Next time, I want to see many hands coming up and nominate candidate worthy of recognition. We have position statements submitted to the World Health Organization, and yesterday we have the first meeting of the International Credentialing Board, and we have also a training webinar. There is much progress that has been done, but the question is now, where do we go from here? Where is the compass leading us? And it's really dependent not so much on what we decide, but more so how much you're willing to work with this compass, how much you're willing to commit yourself, the extra time that you may have on Thursdays to this international progress. There is a dependence on technology for delivery of healthcare services, research, development, manufacturing application, and safe use. This dependence is higher today than it was yesterday, and guess what? It's going to be higher tomorrow than it is today. Therefore, it's re required that, it will go, that we will have health technology management program that is able to master the direction and safeguard the use of the technology the way that we perceive it to be. Education and training is important. However, we still have a large gap between the body of practice, as Khalil is saying, and the body of knowledge. Academic institution teaching clinical engineering about yesterday, the maintenance and repair and stick this, uh, put the stickers on the machine. That's not the future. We heard today here about artificial intelligence, about big data, about robotic, about biomaterial about the possibility, although he didn't agree, that machine might replace the doctor one day. I'm not suggesting that he is wrong, but I'm saying there is tremendous material that need to be trained, learned, researched, and educated. We need to master the qualification of the clinical engineers that come to work in the field and agree that there is a certain common element of low threshold that we must cross, be above, in order to practice clinical engineer. And that is something that we say the call for action is for us, get engaged, push up those information systems that suggest what is common to the field, what is the commission commitment, what is the stewardship that we say we need to have competency, we need to have credentialing, we need to volunteer in the community and we need to deliver program that are managing technology development. So the call for paper is something that is part of the Global Journal of Clinical Engineering. We have those issues already published. You're welcome to go online and flip the pages. The Enigma machine was famous for breaking the code of the Nazi regime military machine and understand their communication. I put it on the front page of vol volume one, issue number two, because the message is we don't need code-breaking machine to publish. We need to engage, commit ourselves to publish, and be part of the progress. 
turn health into wealth and take the Congress proceeding and put it as a publication for young generation that coming on the field would like to know of what are, that we do. So in conclusion, this is a happy day. It's a birthday. Together we can make it better so everybody and me too believes. And I would say that you can go quicker by yourself. That's right. But if you, go, if you want to go fast, if you want to go further and reach more, we have to do it together. And together we make it better and you can continue to ask the question, am I sufficiently engaged? Can I do a better job than that? This is the point when I finish my first message to you and hope that you will take it back to your workplace and work with your team on increasing the engagement through the tools that we describe here today. Thank you for this part. Now I would like to go quickly to my second part, which is a little bit more fun and entertainment. In order not to compete with the celebration here today, the traditional October 21st Global Clinical Engineering Day celebration that is taking place in China every year was moved to last week and the celebration started and the torch was lit and just like the Olympic game has been moved around and reached Rome. The uh, Congress in China has two parts. It's a fana, it's a gala with fun activity at the evening before the opening where clinical engineering participants perform. All the performers you're going to see are clinical engineers, except Andriana, that is the speaker, the serious part on the video. But all the other are actual clinical engineers from the hospital that practice and perform. And then I would like you to see the emphasis they put in China on the event and how much engagement they have. And if you would like to just see something that is amazing, is that over half a million views were taking record when they streamed live the session in China last week. 502,900 to be specific in China. That is unheard in our field, and if you're engaged, we will do better than that. Next slide, the video. The last seven minutes of the ceremony here. Be patient. Audio, please.
something like this in America. It's impossible. It's great to see the innovation and the strides that the clinical engineering Welcome to the 中国医疗设备杂志社一直努力为大家搭建起一个全球化的跨界沟通、交流合作的平台。With uh, economics and with the um, policies to make sure that whoever requires 是可以非常灵敏的测量这个磁通量这个磁通量呢把它变成这个电压 
to try and diagnose a problem of concussion and decide if the person should not go to work or should not go to uh, back in the game. 第三部分，这医疗器械的未来与发展趋势。第四是，我们在这个医疗器械的发展有些思考。We we have developed. I'll talk about them later. But we've developed standard business processes for uh for our staff so that we can follow, and it's easier to uh to onboard staff when you have standard business processes. 